Hello and welcome to 7 Days of Science, with a quick message for our patrons at the end. Coming up this week, I reveal my favourite chocolate bar, Milky Way. Ben reveals his middle name, Paddy Melons. And I prepare to take a look at the best episodes of 7 Days of Science. We don't really expect many... Starting off the news this week, probably the biggest science news of the month. NASA's Perseverance rover has successfully landed on Mars, and already we've had some incredible images and video back from the Red Planet just to prove what a magnificent feat this is. The rover landed on Thursday, with NASA streaming their data across the internet for all to see. After the initial re-entry, the parachute was deployed, followed by the separation of the heat shield, allowing the sky crane to bring the rover inside down with a powered descent, eventually lowering it onto the surface and flying off. I won't show the video here, but it can easily be found on YouTube and I highly recommend giving it a watch, it's well worth it. As I mentioned last week, Perseverance's mission is centred around searching Mars for signs of life. Perhaps the most exciting part of the mission being preparing samples for a future mission to bring bits of Mars back to Earth. That shouldn't overshadow the rest of the mission though, and seeing what discoveries the Perseverance rover will be able to make in the next few years is going to be fascinating. In other news, we go even further out into the stars, as a study published this week in the journal Science Advances has suggested that watery planets would actually be relatively common in the Milky Way. The researchers used computer modelling to calculate the way in which planets form and what forms them and in what order. They found that ice may have been a part of the process very early on, meaning that it's far more likely that other planets have water on them in a similar way to Earth, increasing the amount of planets in the galaxy that are suitable for life. And now over to Ben. How are you, Ben? Thanks, Doug. This week we've also had an incredibly exciting paper published in the journal Nature in which the recovery of mammoth DNA that's over a million years old is reported. The paper explains how although theoretically DNA should be able to survive for over a million years, until now the oldest found so far has come from a horse specimen dated to between 780 and 560,000 years old. But now there's a new record. Genetic data from three mammoth specimens from the early to middle Pleistocene have been recovered, with two of these specimens being over one million years old. The results of analysing this genetic data also reveal something very interesting. Two distinct lineages of mammoth were present in eastern Siberia during the early Pleistocene, one which gave rise to the woolly mammoth, and one that was previously unknown but was ancestral to the first mammoths that colonised North America. Not only this, but the research finds that the North American Columbian mammoth appears to have originated from a hybridisation between these two distinct lineages during the Middle Pleistocene. So some absolutely fascinating research that illustrates how important and useful paleogenomics can be for investigating ancient animals such as these. And finally is some slightly unusual news as in the last week there was a very interesting claim that photos of living thylacines have been obtained followed by the dismissal of this claim, with it instead being likely that the photos show paddy melons. The thylacine, or the Tasmanian tiger, was a marsupial native to Tasmania, New Guinea and mainland Australia, but has been considered extinct since the last known one, an individual named Benjamin, died in a zoo in 1936. However, this week the Thylacine Awareness Group of Australia announced that they had photos from a camera trap apparently showing a mother, father and baby thylacine living in northeast Tasmania. The photos were then sent to the Honorary Curator of Vertebrate Zoology at the Tasmanian Museum and Art Gallery to be verified. However, he concluded that the photos most likely show paddy melons, not living thylacines. It's disappointing news for those of us who hope for the possibility of thylacine survival, despite it being highly unlikely at this point, but it will still be interesting to see these photos when they're released. Anyway, back to Doug in the studio. Thank you, Ben. Just quickly for all our patrons, we've got our monthly live stream happening this Sunday on the third anniversary of Seven Days of Science. Don't worry if you can't tune in live, we don't really expect many, if any, to do, but it will still be accessible afterwards as a kind of podcasty thing. That's it for this week's Seven Days of Science. I do hope you enjoyed it, and as always, we'll see you next Wednesday.